Hey, welcome back. How is everyone? I'm good. It's fine. It's Sunday. I'm child free for a bit whilst, which is obviously why I'm able to film. And I am going to film a look today with products under £15, cruelty free. Most of them are available at the drugstore or like um, Superdrug or something like that. I don't know what I refer to the drugstore in the UK. However, um, all of these are cruelty free and they're products I really like and I um, think work quite well. So I wanted to just share some of them with you and the way I use them. So it's going to be quite an everyday look. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but let's just get cracking. So the e.l.f. primer mist I'm going to use first is Illuminator, Illuminating Primer Mist. Deep breath in and breathe out. And spray, 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 spray. Oh. <laughs> I've got a dog in the background who's just been soaked. And I'm just going to fan that down a little bit while I get my foundation ready. So the foundation I'm going to use today is a physician's formula. Now, this is would be referred to a drugstore in America because it's available at the drugstore. It's not available at the drugstore in the UK. However, I got mine from Amazon. It was it's still a really, really reasonable price, but it did come from America. So I had to wait a bit and take a gamble on the shade. But it looks OK. You can be the judge of that. Uh, so let me get cracking. I'm using a sponge. Now, this looks like a beauty blender and it's not a beauty blender. And I've gone specifically to use a not a beauty blender just because I, the title of this um, video is that it's affordable. These are like a set of six or something or four from Amazon. I just typed in um, like cruelty free makeup sponge and these came up. I think they're a few pounds, really nice, spongy, expand really well, which is obviously very important. Um, and you will see, you will see how it looks now. So I'm going to, oh my gosh, I have been mowing the lawn. I seem to have a red mark here, but that's good because we can test the concealer that I'm going to use today. I don't know if anyone's got any experience of this, but I trimmed for the first time my nose hair. Now, I just thought, like any hair, I suppose if I trim hair, I, I've never had weird sensations after trimming hair. It's crazy. Let's get down this. Trimming um, hair before, but oh my goodness, from trimming my nose hair. Absolutely horrendous. Like really itchy nose. It feels like there's something there. There's not, there's no hair there now anyway. But... I don't know if that's just me or is it something else. I, it's almost, I suppose, like the comparable of trimming a pet's whiskers, which I've never done, not intentionally anyway, but they have some sort of sensation, don't they? So does that tell me? Let me know. Am I alone? Have I got weird whiskery nose hair? Or is it not meant to, maybe it's not meant to be trimmed, but it gets to a point in your life where your hair starts to grow a little bit quicker all over your face and you think, oh no, it's happened. And I can really distinctly remember when I was quite young, my mum having like a lot of hair removal. She wasn't, I didn't think she was hairy at all, but she obviously was quite aware of everything. And thinking, oh my gosh, like, when does that happen? Oh, you have to be really old for hair removal to become an issue. Oh, well, I'm really old, obviously, because hair, my hair just started sprouting faster than ever. But I know that's not really what anyone wants to hear, especially while they're watching um, me apply makeup to my face. But it is a very sad, sad thing. Your cells and your face apparently don't renew as well, but your hair ones do. Now let's see how that's covering up this red mark. Hmm. I like this foundation actually. I, I tried it first and I wasn't too keen, so I was like, oh. Then I tried it again. Somehow it was completely different. So I don't know if it was maybe because I caught the sun a bit, because the shade is a little bit darker for me. So I'm going to take a little bit and blend it down into my neck. I've been um, mowing the lawn this afternoon, but we have had an issue with the strimmer, which has blown up in use. Um, and the lawnmower I've got is is one that sort of hovers but the grass is a bit long so it looks like I've sort of mashed up a load of dead bodies on the lawn but they're not bodies it's bits of grass but it just looks terrible but it is long less short less long oh, maybe I'll just have a little bit of silence a lot less long now so it looks at least I uh, didn't get any snake um she used to take us to, to pick bilberries in North Wales and I'd always remember her with this big well, like a walking stick and I used to say to her at nine why do you have the walking stick and she's like to keep away the snakes Libby bar. and that is what she was doing she used to tap the, <laughs> tap the ground really hard and I don't know my mum is um quite a, 
quite um, concerned about the presence of snakes, but they did, so I'm just leaning out, they did grow up in, an, in a different country which did have a lot of snakes. So, um, all right, so I'm going to go in with the Revolution Conceal and Divine in C3. Oh, I forgot to say, the Physician's Formula shade was Light Neutral 3. This is when I was insistent I was a neutral sort of skin tone. However, I realise that I'm more of a warm tone. Who would have thought but it kind of you know if you blend it down to your neck up your ears and that is a little tip i mean when you're putting on foundation if you're going for not a day-to-day -day look but a bit of a heavier look whatever the foundation kind of just take it onto your ears down your neck to avoid some of that um possibility of having like a a separate line right so i'm going to go heavy with the concealer today so that's obviously patch there let's just see what how we can conceal under the eyes here this is the Revolution Conceal and Define in C3. And I'm going to go heavy with this because I've got time to play. And I enjoy putting on makeup. It's relaxing. I'm going to use the same sponge. I'm going to tap it in. And I'm using the um, screen here as my mirror. So you are seeing what I am seeing. Lucky lot. I've been using... Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I did say about not buying any products, didn't I? Uh, well, um, since the 25th, and I was going to do it for a month, and that's fine. I think I'm going to have to relinquish on skincare because I've got little problem patches on my skin, which is one here. It's almost as if I've been dribbling overnight when I wake up. It's like a dry patch. But I don't think it can be because I do change sides, so I'm not sure why the dribble would just be on one side. But also... It does look like dry skin. I'm just going to put a little bit more concealer just around on my forehead here, just get rid of some of the shine. Um, so I had been using a product I bought before I'd realised about the selling in China. So I bought it quite a while ago, found it in my cupboard and I thought I should get rid of it. I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it up and never buy it again. But it's the Clinique Moisture, Moisture, Moisture Surge gel the 72 hour rehydration now since i've stopped since i've run out of all that i've been trying different products there are some that have been working really well also quite expensive but this has come back the dryness so i'm not sure if it's um you know so i'm not sure if it was that clinique product that's really helping or not I'm going to use a powder now to go into the um, eyes and face, all over the face. I'm going to use the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder. I've used this before, but it's nice. It's cruelty-free and it's cheap. So, still got a bit of that red mark there. Hmm. So that's a little bit of a sign. Then the two together, you'd have to really layer it up if you wanted to um, cancel out everything. But I'm not really a fan of really heavy makeup or makeup that looks like I've got makeup on unless I'm going out and the lighting will be a little less uh, uh, light. I'm using the brush here. It is the EcoTools Full Powder Face Brush. And this is available in Superdrug, probably from Boots as well, but I got it from Superdrug. So I really like EcoTools products because I like the feel and they're wood. Well, they should be wood, but they've got really nice quality feel. They're not with animal fur. So you know that no animal has had to suffer for you to be able to just put makeup on your face, which is how it should be. All right, for my eyebrows today, I have forgotten to bring a drugstore or under, um, cheaper products. I'm going to go and use one product that isn't should be discarded from this video and pretend that I've never mentioned it and I didn't even use to use it. So at the moment, my brows are a little bit wayward because I'm trying to sort of grow them out. And I tint them as well at the same time. I usually get them tinted or waxed or threaded. So I'm just going to go in with this, a spoolie. Now, with eyebrows, they sort of say that the shape of your eyebrow, if you were having them shaped professionally, the shaper, whoever does your eyebrows, should kind of work on the beginning of your eyebrow, going up from a line from your edge of your nose. So we start in here. Maybe I should be starting a little bit more in, but these are the rules. I'm not saying my eyebrows follow the rules, so, so please bear with me. So they should start here. So take a line with a um, pen or pencil or like a lollipop stick on its side. The start of the eyebrow should be here. So you draw a little line here. 
So let's go in with it. A little faint line. I'm just going to start that there. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning. And then the arch should be where the, the colour starts here. So kind of above your pupil, the arch. Now the, at the end of your brow should be, well, it should cover from across your nose, across just alongside your eye to the edge. So you would be ending them. Let me just keep my eye on that spot here. Here. So to make the shape, I'm going to pull my eyebrow up and come a bit closer. See if it can focus on me, do that. Okay. And what I tend to do is I just draw a little bit of in strokes. I don't draw a heavy line, but in strokes. And this is quite a thin nib, so it's nice to work with. I just sort of outline what I've already got going in. Up, stroke, stroke, stroke. Now here is where I tend to have problems. It's from the middle down. So here I will use a bit more of strokes. And I don't, I just draw a bit of a guide and then I'm going to stroke, 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 just to add to the hair you've already got there. Gosh, the colour of the line is changing. It's a, it's a bit of a changeable day weather-wise. And then let's just brush that. So when I think the kind of the line is okay, I leave it for a moment and I do another step. And then the same on this one. So if we apply the same principles, we, ooh, whoa, we need to chop off half this brow. But say we start here, so maybe I need to be starting. Oh, crikey, so there, but because my brow does start here, I'm just gonna go with what I've got already. And I'll just erase that. Just lots of little strokes, just to sort of fill it in. And then the same here, so get right under into that arch, and then just lots of little strokes out. Hmm. Now, the shadow is not so good on it. But there is a product I use, which I think is really useful when you don't really want to do any of that. Because, um, who can blame you? You don't have long, life is short, you don't really spend any whole day putting makeup on unless that makes you extremely happy. But there is a product I use from Gosh, which is available at Superdrug. It's called the Brow Scalp Sculpting, Scalping, the Brow Scalping which is the one, <laughs> the Brow Sculpting Fibre Gel. And I'm using the shade Nutmeg. Now this is almost like a mascara, but it has a little bit of fibre in it. And then how this works, you just sort of brush it on and it adds to the texture, adds some colour, but also sort of keeps them in place. And I think these are really good, if you're a bit nervous with your brows, a bit scared of overdoing it, and having to start again this is a great way to add a little bit of color if you hadn't even gone in with the pencil before and um adding a bit of i say depth but a bit of thickness to your brows no, but don't feel any pressure to add more to the brows than you've got or you're comfortable with do your brows how you like they're yours but if you're wanting a little bit more color and texture the brow scalp sculpting <sighs> Okay, you know, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to use a little bit of bronzer now. I'm going to use the NYX Matte Bronzer in the shade Light. And this is a really nice uh, product because it was it's almost useful as a blush as well as a bronzer. And I got, got it from a recommendation at the NYX counter. She was a lovely lady, very helpful, very um, listening to my needs. Didn't make me buy a really full coverage um, foundation. Shade matched me really well in the Total Control Drops which is also nice. I can add those in a video if you want, let me know. So with bronzer, again, there's no set rules. I've been a bit scared of bronzer because I don't like to look, you know, ooh, here, but I do like how it can make my face look a little bit more sculpted. It's not, I don't use contour really very often. I I can, but as, as can everyone, but I, I could use it to show you, but today I'm not going to. I'm just gonna use some bronzer to do a bit of both now. This is the Real Techniques brush I mentioned. I'll put, put a link below as to which one it is. I just loaded it one side, tapped off a bit of the excess, and I go in in sort of a circular, frantic motion. I have a dog behind me. He's cute. And I really blend it into that hairline as well. You, you try not to have, um, you know, so your skin is coming out of your head 
and it just looks like this. This really is great at warming up your cheek and just adding a little bit more definition to what can be quite flat once you've added all the, the foundation and the concealer and the um, powder. Now, once I've got that product on me, I work it in quite a lot. And then you tend to find that what can look quite scary at the beginning can end up looking quite natural and warm. As you can see, look at the difference can, um, if you just work it in. And don't be scared. So just if you're, if you're new to bronzer, tap just a little bit if you like. Tap off the extra, blow off the extra and work it in. Now, I tend to um, put a little bit around here for my headline, hairline to bring a little bit more definition. And again, I'm just moving my brush all over this sort of area. And then I'm gonna do the same again and just bring a bit here to add a bit of a shadow under my chin. And again, I just really work that in. I think you can't go wrong with makeup if you just blend, blend, blend. Whatever you've got, eyeshadows, bronzers, blushes, if in doubt, blend it out. When I was <laughs> when I had Nal, it used to be the saying of like when in doubt, get your boob out to feed her. So it just changes a different phase of your life. I'm sure there's more when I get older, like when in doubt, um, bring your pads out. I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. But let's just work that in. So that's just the three taps I've had of that now. But I've worked it into the skin. And for me, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to do the same on the other side now. For, for the initial uh, for the initial application on the side, I've gone a bit heavier, but I tap, tap, tap. And you might see, so if you can see in here, a bit, a bit of dust, a bit of the product comes off. And I'm starting just around my cheekbone there and working it back into the hairline. And then sort of do a few swirly movements until I get to the hair. <laughs> and then as it's worked in, I come a little bit further out into my cheek zone. And I work it in. And circular movements in. I think we need just a tiny bit more on this side. So we'll put a little bit more on. And the good thing about using light layers and lots of blending is that you can really build stuff up if you want and you've got the control over the product. Lots of thin layers on the face can just make it look a lot more natural than if you go in quite heavy at the beginning um, with lots of product on your brush. You have to then, you can have, it can look quite, can look quite cakey. I'm not saying it would, but it's just less of a risk. And I think if you're new to makeup or new to putting it on or playing around with it, then there's no harm with going quite lightly. And then if you feel like you want more, it's much easier to add than to take away. And I've learned that lesson. <laughs> oh dear. So the same thing, I'm just working it into the hairline around the top of my head. I'm working it back down here. And I'm just going to put a little bit under here and blend it down. Again, blending that down the neck as if it's always been there. Okay, so now I've got my bronzer on. I'm quite happy with that. I sometimes will now go in with blush or I do eyes. So today I'll do eyes. Let's, you know, let's just live a little crazy eyes. There's two palettes I've got here with me today. I've got the NYX Love You So Mochi. Now this is kind of like a, they're um, soft textured eyeshadows. You see if I push, you can see my finger indent they're really lovely they look quite subtle but they can be quite um they're quite pigmented on the eye so i do like using these for a quite a natural everyday look and this is a beautiful one well they're all beautiful i want to dig my nails into each and every single one but i won't because i can't replace it because i'm on a no buy oh the complications of the first world problems this one is lovely just on its own or on top if i just do a little swatch with it. It's just, oh my gosh, look look how beautiful. I mean, you could use this, like I say, any other ones, a highlighter, anything, but just on top of any eye look, it just really adds a beautiful, beautiful layer of finesse. I've also got another palette with me today, which is also one that I want to dig my nails into. It's the Gosh um, Shadow Collection in the shade 001, Enjoy in New York. 
and these are quite nice little mauvey new um matte shades with the three shimmers at the top but what shall we do so i'm going to go in with a big bigger brush at the beginning to lay down sort of like a base color now the point of i think people using a transition shade or base color ones is so it helps the other product products blend in without adding too much too much of a overpowering color underneath so you can be a bit bolder on top it just helps the colors blend in and it sort of transition between your skin color the eyeshadow shade that you want to stand out a little bit more and then that transitional base shade stand correct correct me if, if you need to <laughs> so, so the brush i'm going to use i've got a lovely set of the bh cosmetic brushes i got these from beauty bay or cult so i'm going to use but initially i'm going to use an eco tools double-ended brush i don't really like it when they're double-ended i don't like storing one down and one up but this is quite a nice um all over sort of blending brush and i to start with Oh, decisions I'm going to use in the NYX palette this light shade here I'm just going to put that all over the eye and when I put it all over the eye I tend to blend it in in circles again I don't know if that's happy I mean I could do this I just feel like the finish is a little bit more even when you do it a little dance on your eyelid there So that's just a lighter shade on there. Now for colour, hmm, this is when we have to make decisions that are so difficult because um, I'm only going to do my makeup, makeup once today. So, you know, it's quite a big decision. I'm going to go now in with a bigger brush, which is weird, I suppose, because now I'm going to use a bit more colour. But this is a large brush from, gosh, where did I get? I got my Amazon set. It was just the eye brushes, and I needed some more eye brushes. I didn't want real, you know, I wanted to go cruelty free. So I hoped, I hope Amazon is telling me the truth, but these got good reviews and they were sold directly from Amazon itself. Anyway, so I'm going to go all over the eye with... With a bit of a shimmer shade. I'm going to use this little shade here. I don't think they have colour, they don't have names, they just call it, this is number seven. I'm going with number seven. I'm going to do a big dab, 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 tap, 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 and then just put that over the eye. Again, I'm using the same circular motions on this one because it's really quite a light shade. I'm happy to take all over the upper eyelid. And just see there's a slight difference now in colour. <laughs> Ever so slight, but there is. So I'm going to do the same on this side. Dance, dance, dance. Okay, now for the next colour I'm going to go in with, I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm going to use the other ends, and I'm going to go in with this purpley shade in this gosh palette. You just see it picks up enough there. Just tap off, and I'm going to do it almost upwards here, and a little bit of a dance. So the edge of this brush is just meeting just above my crease. My eyes are really hooded, so it's very hard to see the colour. If I do colour on my eyes, I'll do the same again and add a little bit more. But if I go too crazy with the colour, it can look a bit unusual because it's coming up quite high on my eye, despite the fact that you you can't really see all of it. And do the same now, just try and match those up whilst on the other eye. Just bringing a tiny bit of colour. If you can see that. Bring a tiny bit of bruisey colour to my eye eyelid. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to turn the brush back round and I'm just going to blend that back out. Like I say, there's no harm in blending. You won't make anything worse by going over it again with the brush. Just gets rid of any harsh lines. The only lines I want, babe, are on my six pack, which is you know a work in progress. I'm starting with. <laughs> Starting with the trainer tomorrow, personal trainer. 
Oh, bless me and bless her because I'll try and talk my way up any exercise. And I know she's not going to let me. I know she's going to like stop talking and do some work. But I am really going to try. I'll let you know how I get on with talking myself out of exercise and how much um, she'll let me get away with. And then, so I'm going to go back in now with the, one of the BH Cosmetics. This is called a number six. This was a part of a set and it was 20% off as well. So these are really good value brushes. They feel nice. They've lasted really well and they're cruelty free. So what more could you ask for? Right, let me think. We're going every day. Don't want to give anyone a shock. So let's go a little bit pinky. So I'm going to come and use a little bit of this number two shade. Named by NYX, not by me. Now this is a bit shimmery. Now for this, I'm going to keep it below where my eye socket sort of sinks in. And then I'm going to do the same. The nice thing about these NYX um, eyeshadows are they really pick up even though they're so soft. And they're not too dusty. There's a little bit of, of pick up, but they are shimmery shades, most of them. But they really pay off. You know, you don't have to go over again or you don't need to use a primer with them. Put a little bit more on there now. I'm going to start to stamp, 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 stamp. And the difference between the blending and the stamping, the, the stamping, if, you, if anyone refers to packing on colour, this would be what they sort of referring to this stamping really putting the color in a concentrated fashion in the area you want so now you can see there is a little bit of a build up of color as in it's getting more noticeable with the same big brush i'm just gonna use that again i'm just gonna twirl it around the edge a little dance around the edge just so we're making sure that those colours are all tying in nicely. Now I could leave it here for every day. Yeah, I'm having these removed. I'm going to try and film it if she'll let me, the lady that's doing it. I don't know how they've just appeared because I've all got old saggy eyelids, I suppose. I mean, what a place to have like chafing skin, isn't it? Eyelids. And I love putting eyeshadow on and stuff. And it's not from that, I'm sure. I think it's just from the rubbing, you know. Too much movement obviously i'm not sleeping enough i'm awake too much so um yeah i'm gonna film these being removed if i get appropriate um permissions obviously i'm fine with that unless it really hurts but we'll just you know we'll see how it goes but so next time you might see an eye look these will these these will go now, for most people, if I saw somebody with them on the eyelids, I'd just blow them just by the eyes. But for me, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So let's use a smaller brush. Now, this is this, oh, it's a, I, this is a really old brush, a Ted Baker one I had from a set about six years, maybe six years ago. And I'm going to use it. So you can see now my eye look. It's just sort of a bit of a fade in. Quite natural. But I am going to add a little bit more depth. Now I'm going to use this colour here, which is actually, a, looks quite pinky brown, purpley brown, but it, is, it comes out quite brown. So let's go out with this. Let's just do a little bit of ch -ch 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 -ch, swipe, 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 and then tap. And I'm going to place it again, this pack, like as I refer to packing on colour. And just take it on that last third of my eye and tap, 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 and bring it out. The same on the other side. About a third way in. That's looking relatively equal. I'm going to have to come in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't often bring colours under my eyes, but today, you lucky lot, are going to see me do it. And we're going to see the results. I'm going to turn the brush over. For some reason, that just feels like it'll be more precise. I'm going to go use the shade I've just used on the outer corner. And I'm going to just rub it underneath my eye. Just that sort of outer third. The reason I don't do this very much is, is a confidence thing. I'm not used to doing it. I watch a huge amount of videos. And they all sort of seem to do it. But... I don't know if it's a, if it 
I don't know if because the weight translates on camera, maybe it's not as intense as I see it if I was in real life. But sometimes it just looks a bit like, whoa, you know. And sometimes, I, uh, most of the time actually, I want people to think I just woke up like this. Glitter on my eyelids. Chisel cheeks. You know, who doesn't want that? I think as well now, just one more colour we're going to add here. Or two more, two more colours. I'm going to use the lighter one first. So I'm going to use that BH Cosmetics brush again. I'm going to go into this light gold, which is the beautiful one that I say looks great on any, on the top of any. Now, I haven't ever used these with a primer, but I should try because I bet it would be like, I bet it would. Let's try. So I'm just putting that on the first third of my eye. And I'm going to deepen the eye look one last time with this Ted Baker brush and I'm going to use this purpley shade here and I'm going to just use a sort of pinch my brush there pinch it together make a bit more of a point I have um you can buy pointy brushes I don't want to have one to hand and if you were just working with one brush then you could you can just alter the shape like this just rub that in just really right to the edge and I'm almost bringing it just outside my eye so it just smokes that up ever so slightly. Just see, for me, just feel it's a bit more preferable. Oh, a bit too much on there, so tap that off again. And I'm going to rub that out. So what I'm hoping to see is a bit of a... Oh, what's that? It's gone anyway. Is it sort of like a bit of a gradient shift? There. So there we go. That for me is my is my eye eyeshadow done. Right, I'll speed up a little bit now. It's taken a lot of time on that, but eyeshadow can take ages. So it's good I'm preparing you. I'm doing you a favour. So for blush, I've got a really battered packaging of an MUA. Now these are a pound, one pound, cruelty free, available on MUA's website or Superdrug. And this is a blusher in shade four. Now it's quite um, a warm, peachy pink and I think it, it, can look, it can look beautiful so I'm going to use the brush that I did with my bronzer so there'll probably be still a bit of product on I just swirl it on my hand a little and just stab the, the blush a few times and then tap all that extra off almost like undoing what you've just done but and I'm going to smile and then work that in and around and back up Working out and back out. Hmm, I'm not so keen on that shade. I'm going to do the same on the other side, but I'm going to add a bit more of a pinker tone. So I'm just putting it on the apple of my cheek, but working it back. Again, it's just the blending. With blush, I sometimes do the same. I just add a little bit under here. A little bit here. <laughs> just hold a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. So that's my blush but I am going to pinking it up a bit because I think it just needs a little bit extra something extra this is a NYX baked blush in BBL 09 journey I don't know if that's part of the name this is quite an iridescent really really soft blush you see that there so it's a bit of a bit of a sheen so some may not be so keen on this but I do like a sheen in my product anything that makes me look a bit more healthy than I am I'm using again from the boots, I mean cheeks, a cheek brush. I think this was something like a pound, one pound seventy or something. And I'm going to swirl my brush around in. Oh, do you know I keep forgetting to use? I bought a beautiful, is it a NYX blusher brush with some bits of hair, not hair, like these, like bristles, were longer than the others. So it's meant to be for blush, and I love the way it applies it. But I just keep forgetting to use it. But next time, and I'm just going to put that right on the edge there and just really really smiling that in my smile is so scary like I'm growling like a dog smile put a little bit on my chin who doesn't want a red blushy chin eh 
so there we go see there it's nice bit of, bit of a glisten now you're in for a treat for highlighter because i've got two and i'm gonna use both <laughs> right so first of all i've got a um oh hang on quickly before they do that i've got an elf <clears throat> lip scrub which will be great to get my lips prepared for so this is a lip exfoliator from elf it's lovely it's like a grainy does that make a difference if I do that? No, I haven't got a proper camera to do it, but I am going to try and use my camera. I'm just trying to get the right setter. And it, it's a scrub. So it, it's rough against your lip, but it is really um, moisturizing as well. I'm gonna use my finger just to rub that in a little bit more. Mm. Do let, let that do this some work whilst I add, go crazy with a highlighter. So first of all, I'm going to use the Revolution Liquid Highlighter. It's called Liquid Bronze Gold, and it's called Liquid Bronze Gold. That's the shade. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this sponge I've been using. I'm going to put a little bit of the liquid highlighter on the back of my hand. I find this is the best way to apply it, without, which gives you the most control. And I'm going to tap the tip. Tap it in the top, but also then tap it over my hand just to sort of work it in. And then tap it just here. This is a beautiful highlighter because it gives you like a really wet sheen. It's not, obviously it's not powdery because it's not powder, but it gives you the ability to, again, work with it, blend it in, go from every day. And then if you were then to go out at night, you could add a little bit more on top and it will allow you to to make your makeup work for you. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And I'm quite, f don't like it to be a streak. So I'm gonna just take the other side then without the product and work that in. Same on these. I'm hoping you can see that on camera. Just do a little bit on the upper lip. Rub that down the nerve. A little bit above each eyebrow. There you go. And then I'm going to add another thing on top. Again, another Revolution product. And this is the Rose Gold Highlighter. And this is in the shade uh, Rose Gold. So it's an Ingot Highlighter. I'm going to use... Which brush, which brush, which brush? I'm going to use a brush today. No fingers, no swearing. All clean. And I'm going to go quite heavy. Shake, 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 shake. Um, swipe, swipe, swipe. Then I'm going to tap it all off. So the same thing of undoing the work you've already done. Let's go again. I'm using a bit of circular motion in here as well to avoid the streak of highlight that you can often get. Now with this, this is where I'm going to use on the top, just to add a little bit of highlighter right at the top of the eye look under the eyebrow. You see the difference there. And then join that up. Swirl, 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 swirl. I forgot to bring a cheap mascara downstairs, so I'm going to use this Damn Girl mascara in a travel size. So it fits under the £15, about £10 as a travel size. Ooh, panic there. Let's go and curl my eyelashes. I'm going to have to cover myself a little bit here. And crimp. Just about that doing a bit of a bouncy motion can help keep it up. <clears throat> I'm really keen to try the LVL lashes again, the tint and the lift. I had them done quite a bit, a year and a half ago, and they're really good. And then I went somewhere else and they just weren't so good. So I'm going to go to the lady who is going to do the removal of these. I trust her. Trust her quality control because there's nothing worse than when you go somewhere originally and it's really good and you go back to the same place and you think, oh, you know. Right, so this is a huge look, I mean, a huge wand. So I am quite careful because I have put myself in the eye with it before. So just bear with me while I put on. Now, when I put on mascara, I tend to like to a bit stroke as usual, but also a wiggle and a, a wiggle and a curl. A wiggle and a curl. 
so big, this brush, that it's quite hard not to get it on your eyelid. But it, but it does do some lovely stuff. It does its job. I did um, have a sneezing fit on the dog walk earlier. My eyes started to run and I already had some of this on. Didn't hold. I hadn't put the NYX on. I looked horrendous. As you know, if anyone had seen me, they would have probably asked, oh gosh, girl, what's wrong? I'd have said, my mascara is not holding up to sneezing. It looked like I'd been crying. It looked horrendous. And then I rubbed my eyes and then it rubbed in my eyes. You know how it goes. So let's just go into the other eye here. A little wriggle. A wriggle and a shake. Gosh, it's been a while since I've had my eyelashes tinted. It's quite enjoyable not to have to do this. I mean, it, when I've had my eyelashes tinted, even not even lifted, I don't put mascara on every day. But when they're as light as they are now, I could go without mascara, but I'm just not used to it. And my eyebrows being a little bit dark, it can look, a, you know, a little bit mismatched. So now I'm going to do the, use the same mascara for my bottom lashes. Excuse the silence. Let me catch my breath. Give you all a break. Just go a little bit more. So there's my, my mascara. I'll let that dry and then I'm gonna just go over top of it with the NYX proof it. So whilst we're waiting for that, let's do my lips. So I'm gonna lick off the sugar, which was in that. And I'm gonna use Hmm, I'm torn. Let's go with another e.l.f. product. This is um, like a lip crayon in tea rose. It's really pretty colour. Great for every day. It's almost the same colour as my lips. But it's just a little bit more pink. I start the edge first, just go right as, as far as I can on the edge of my bottom lip. And then let it join together. <laughs> That's just a really pretty easy shade to maintain. Um, you know, nothing that's going to need a lot of reapplication. But if it does, it's not something that's glaringly obvious. Right, so let's go in my little, my best friend. In the next, I'm going to use the screen here. Because you don't really need the mirror for this. Just blindly, oh gosh, <laughs> blindly stab within the area you want to be applying it. It's fine. And the same here. And then the same for my bottom lashes. You can just see here, it's like I'm almost like a clear, whitey blue thing that just goes on the top and basically glues the product onto your lashes. And there we go. That is my everyday makeup look with relatively affordable products. I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed the super long video. I know some don't, so I apologise. Um, just play it in the background on silent. Please comment and like and subscribe. It helps me. It helps me know. The commenting helps me know who you are so I can interact. I know who's watching. But if you don't want me to know who you are, keep on watching. Watch in secret, that's fine. But I hope you are enjoying what you're seeing. Any suggestions, comments, or anything you'd like to see. The next time I think I might try and do the dupe for the Clinique 72 hour moisture, moisture surge gel. I've got some products coming from Superdrug, which I kind of like no no by, but that was what I was gonna say. I haven't I haven't bought any makeup, so we're fine. We're not buying any makeup for a month. So it's fine. I'm fine with that. But I have bought some um moisture gel because of my dribbly patch. Thank you. Hope you all uh, hope to see you all soon again. Come and watch my other videos. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.